what's poppin' y'all? Welcome back to the Kane Show. This is episode four. And uh if you and I thought episode three was a little weird or awkward, for those of you that aren't watching the video version, I might not have that version out yet. Um I'm in this like tight little room. There's some uh some plastic bins full of shirts near me. To my right is a clothes rack that's covered in a blanket I've been using as the background for my lives on TikTok. And uh, this thing that I'm sitting on, it's like a foam mattress topper that my uncle and my aunt let me use. I fold it in half. I have my cheetah print weighted blanket. I have my memory foam pillow my recording equipment and a cup of coffee and uh this there's a purple bag of clothes behind me it's a purple trash bag it's full of clean clothes and uh yeah man full transparency 1.8 million followers on tiktok 150k on the gram two songs with over 100,000 streams on spotify approaching 100k on apple those same songs and uh I've been sleeping on a floor at my uncle's house for the past two or three months, probably three now. As y'all know, I was staying at Ruffin and Annie's, you know, f before this. I was staying at my ex-girlfriend's before I stayed with Annie and Joji. And uh, here I am, man. Uh, before anyone gets any right ideas, not out of insecurity, but just for the sake of transparency, I'm doing better in every regard I've, ever, you know, than ever, um, financially included. Uh, I guess I'm being cheap or being frugal, or maybe I'm scared to, like, step up to the plate and, like, go get, like, my own place. I don't fucking know. Uh, I think it has a lot to do with that last one, obviously. The way I've been justifying it is that I don't really want to live in Philly, so why would I go get an apartment or a sublet in Philly? But in the same token, if I really don't want to live in Philly, why the fuck am I still in Philly, you know? <laughs> um, but I digress. Uh... First and foremost, I want to thank everybody who listened to the last episode of the podcast, especially um, because the outpouring of support and empathy and understanding that I received from people, even from my ex that uh, I referenced in that episode, was outstanding, and uh, it was much appreciated. It was much a it was much, I can't even talk, it was much appreciated, fucking shit, can't even talk, um, yeah, still nervous about it, um, and also just to put it out there, because she called me about it, by all means, like, she was down to do whatever, she was down to, you know what I mean, take care of me in any way I need, or desire, to be quite honest with you, um, just something I know about me, um, even though I do value and appreciate monogamous relationships, I know enough about myself to know that there's a part of me that just likes having options, man. And like, I, I like seeing what, <laughs> seeing what's out there, what the world has to offer, what particular individuals have to offer me. I've always been into that, you know, even though ironically, with all this, you know, shit going on, all the very fortunate things going on in my life, like, surrounding the content and my music, it, it has been a, a drought, bro, it has been a dry spell, I had a little fun recently, like, a little, a little hotel rendezvous with somebody, but we ain't gonna talk about that, um, oh, but the night that I made the third episode, something ended up happening, um, and oh boy, I've been thinking about it ever since, it was a great time, I ended up 
all of all of my uh, prayers and wishes were answered. So I ended up being quite fortunate that night and had had a cool, you know, meeting reconnection with somebody. Been trying to reconnect with them since and been getting dubbed. So all that to say, you know, you get a sip of water every now and then, and then back to the drought it is what it is. I gotta get the fuck out of Philly. Um, hmm. What are some cool things that happened? I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with the band uh, Against Me, the lead singer, Laura Jane Grace. She made a video maybe like a month or two ago where she was kind of busting my balls a little bit. Like she said something along the lines of, uh, you know the videos where the guy eats a tropical fruit and spouts some esoteric bullshit or something like that, she says, and she's like eating a star fruit incorrectly, might I add. I had to learn too, Laura. That, that we were eating them incorrectly. Um, she fucking shouted me out and that kind of was breaking my balls a little bit. People were tagging me in it. I go and comment on the thing. I'm like, holy shit, like all my old little girlfriends when I was like, you know, fucking white girls, they loved your shit, you know? And um, <laughs> got a kick out of it. We ended up following each other. She invited me to her show recently. She's doing like a solo tour with the dude from Circa Survive, Anthony Green, I think his name is, and then somebody else, I forget their name, but they did, they're did. they doing a tour and they had a stop at Union Transfer in Philly. She invited me the fuck out and um, gave me two tickets. I had no one to, to take with me back to the drought and um, <laughs> I show up. And the whole show was dope, but she fucking killed it. She tore that shit down. And before she did her song, Stay Alive, which is all, which is the last song of her most recent solo project, which is also titled Stay Alive, this motherfucker says, I dedicate this next song to my internet friend, Kane. And it was like, I got the chills, man. Like, I could have cried because she did such a great fucking performance of it. And, um... We bonded over the fact that she named her album Stay Alive and I had no fucking clue. And she had no clue with my whole background and relation to the phrase Stay Alive outside of my merch, you know. Um, and I was going to name my fucking album Stay Alive, so thankfully I fucking didn't, you know what I mean? But we ended up getting to talk after her set and we hung out for like half hour to an hour or something like that. I gave her a dragon fruit and I gave her a shirt that my boy made as like a spoof of her band's debut album cover, which was Reinventing Axl Rose. So it's my face over Axl's face and it says Reinventing Eating Fruit. And then where it says against me, it says against Cain. I gave it to her. She fucking loved it. And I gave her a dragon fruit. She was really excited. We took pictures, got to meet people. I got recognized, the, the security at the venue recognized me. She was like, aren't you, like, famous? And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I was like, but I'm on TikTok, if that's what you know me from. And she was like, oh, my God, yeah, I know you from TikTok. And I was like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And we took a picture. And, um, What else? And then I got recognized twice in the venue. And that was pretty fucking cool. Um, when I went when I went home, she tagged me in a post, and a bunch of people were commenting saying that they fucking recognized me, but didn't want to bother me. I'm like, all right, that's nice, but come on, man, fucking bother me. Like, I I barely go out. Like, if you see me and it's all love, like, say what's up. But if you see me and it's on some problem, just know I got something for that. No, um, just joking. But, uh, yeah, man, anyway, what the fuck has been going on lately? I've been going live like crazy. I've been going live daily, and it's great, man. It's been doing great. Um, I answer the same fucking questions all the time. If, you, um, if you're um, if you watching this podcast, then you probably, like, actually, like, are tuned into everything I do, right? You, like, you know, you're early before this becomes a thing. Um, so, you know, the most frequently asked questions on my shit. Are you vegan, vegetarian, fruitarian? The answer is no. Um, do you eat meat? Same fucking question. The answer is yes. <laughs> but the answer is still the same, even though one is yet. Anyway. Um, what else? 
how long you've been growing your hair. I don't keep track of that shit. I don't give a fuck. Like, you know what I mean? How do you grow your hair long? Stop fucking cutting it. I don't know. Um, what else is another question I get asked? What's your favorite fruit? Watermelon. What's your least favorite fruit? Kiwano. Do, what does dragon fruit taste like? It tastes like a pear and a kiwi had a baby, but the flavor didn't load all the way. There you go, you guys. You pretty much just experienced one of my lives, but in less than a minute or two. Um, shit, where am I at? But a question I've been getting asked lately that I wrote down because I wanted to talk about it. Um, people have been asking me a lot about the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard shit. And um, I try not to talk about celebrities much. Let me sip my coffee real quick. Because, you know, most of them are people, too. Some of them aren't fucking people. Like, they're just fucking ideas that got ahead of a human's own perception um, of themselves. But, uh, yeah, man, the Johnny Depp Amber Heard shit. Uh, Johnny Depp, man, is one of the coolest motherfuckers, like, I think, in acting history. Um, I love his interviews. Probably more even than most of his films. My favorite films of his would probably have to be Fear and Loathing, fucking Blow. Of course he did. I mean, fucking Captain Jack Sparrow, man, you know? Like, Cry Baby was fucking great. Edward Scissorhands was great. Fucking, um, cool motherfucker, man. And, uh, there's a lot of spotty shit going on in the case. I don't want to immediately jump out the window and, like, start, um... I don't want to. I don't want to be like the male voice to silence any fucking woman's voice. That's not my prerogative. Um, if a, if anyone's voice uh, is not worthy of being heard, regardless of gender identity, uh, they will silence themselves. And as far as the Amber Heard shit and Johnny Depp shit goes, um, I think the, you know, most of the proof is in the pudding, man, it's kind of all there, uh, he got the, re- he got receipts, you know, that she was painting him out to be some kind of fucking monster and shit, and, you know, you know the guy did some coke, and, like, you know, he was addicted to painkillers, he was a fucking lush, like, you know, he changed Winona forever to Wino forever, like, he, you know, he's a fucking rock and roll motorcycle fucking dude, like, he hangs out with Alice Cooper and fucking dudes like that, you know, so he's a fucking, he's like that kind of guy, um, that being said, you know, he don't strike me as a fucking tough guy, and I ain't no tough guy either, but like, I've been in fucking, I've been in some, some little fucking scrappy situations, violent situations, and I've, I've been in, I've been in domestic disputes as well, man, and, uh, it's not the coolest shit in the world, it's really not fucking cool, I don't wish it on nobody, but, Knowing what it's like to be in a position where you're getting hit by a woman and you want to fucking do what any natural human's reactions would tell them to do. Um, But knowing that it'd be the wrong choice. So you fight it. Like, knowing what that's fucking like. I can only imagine the whirlwind that this guy is experiencing now. Let alone what he experienced in the moment. Um... You know, I was in a similar situation, obviously not with millions and fucking Disney uh, contracts on the line yet, but um, it was this little John that I was, I was fucking with for a good like two or three year period, man, like 2017 and up, and um, up until when I was uh, voluntarily committed to the psych ward, you know, I was fucking with this John and um. I didn't realize how deeply I was being enmeshed in this person's fucking plan, this person's bullshit. I don't want to go into great detail, but it ended up getting to the point. I talk about it in my music and all that shit, man. You can listen. Um, it ended up getting to the point where when I was finally in the hospital, I realized, like, I learned sh- I learned these uh, phrases and they're talking about love bombing. They're t- they're telling me about br- what breadcrumbing is and the Hoover method when they fucking get you, suck you back in. And um, it was when I learned about smear campaigns that I started getting really worried. Um, because following my discharge from my discharge from the 
the hospital. And I tried to win this person back even though I should have just counted my lucky stars that this person was moving on. Um, this person did everything in her power to try to like bait me into doing something that would justify the bad things that she was getting ready to start spreading and saying about me uh, through our various mutual so social circles and more specifically the closest people in my life at the time which were this girl I was like talking to my ex Brianna and my best friend Ruffy she started going around saying that I had said some crazy ass racist shit to her and her new boyfriend um, for those of y'all that don't know I have a history of dating outside of my race uh, most of my exes up until I, most of my exes all of my exes from fucking 2011 2012 on have been black uh, they, I, I, I usually date black women um, I've done stuff with white girls, I've done stuff with, like, you know, Puerto Ricans on here, fucking, you know what I mean, Dominican, whatever. I'm down with whatever, bro. But, you know, <laughs> fuck it, man, ain't no other way to say it. I love black women. Um, anyway, man, so this joint, black as well, her new boyfriend's black. She was going around spreading, saying, like, that I was saying some fucking, like, outwardly racist shit. And she spread it to the three closest people to me, which are all black. Um, and they all called me and, and warned me and let me know that this person was doing this. And I'm grateful because all three of them genuinely wanted to just warn me and let me know that what this person was doing behind my back. That they were making things up and spreading lies about me. And they did so because they knew it was bullshit. They, they alerted me to this because they knew with their better judgment that I would never do such a thing like that. And it, and it, it, it meant a lot to me then and it still means a lot to me now. Uh, I bring all that up to say it, it's simple as it's simple as that. It's things simple as that to where if that were on a much larger scale, even say like nowadays, right, with me now having more shit to lose, essentially, that's what it is. That shit would have been fucking crazy. That shit would have been fucking crazy. Would have been even harder to clean up. And uh, I have no clue how I would how I would even fucking do it. I've 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 like had fucking nightmares about these like hypothetical scenarios of like what if like she strikes again or, or I'm like there's not much I can do or anyone can do. You just have to hope to God that people fucking can use their better judgment. And determine with their own fucking thought process that they know you better than that. But that's the problem when it comes to public figures. We don't fucking know them better than that. We don't know anything about what the hell really went down behind, you know, between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. We know what we have, we know what we have the fortune of being shown. And that's fucking scary. Because in a scenario like this where you're talking livelihood, you're talking safety, you're talking sanity, you're talking freedom. There's not much room for, for doubts. There's not much room for confusion. There definitely ain't no room for lies. And uh, again, I don't want to ever be a male voice that shuts down the voice of a woman who may or may not have been the victim of abuse or assault 
or anything of that matter. But knowing what it's like to be in a scenario where someone has gone out of their way to lie about something you didn't do, claiming that you did it, it's fucking scary and it needs to be taken seriously. But we have to remember this isn't some type of... I'm torn because so many people are trying to make this out to be some type of symbolic thing about how... Oh, see, men get abused too and women lie. I'm like, well, look, if we're going to make a cause, if we're going to take a cause out of this scenario, let's take the cause that men are the victims of abuse as well. Let's not make the cause women lie about, like, because look, people lie. People are victims of abuse. Men are people. Women are people. They, them are people. Fucking bro. This shit is not, like, let's keep the focus on the those who are being wronged, you know, um, shit, hopefully that made sense, I don't fucking know, but bottom line, um, people coming to me like, ooh, are you on Johnny Depp or Amber Heard's side, I'm like, what the fuck side do you think I'd be on, you know, like, come on now, um, Anyway, the, the camera stopped rolling, so I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. But, whatever. We'll get that rolling. Hold on. I don't know how much longer it, my phone's going to let me film this, but I want to make sure I have the footage of these. So, we're going to cut back into the podcast right here. Just to wrap this up, make this a quick episode, because I'm going to have another one coming very soon. I'm going to start being way more consistent with this shit, because... I got some sponsorship offers. Don't tell nobody. Um, Fuck it. Tell everybody. Damn it. Yeah, we up, baby. You feel me? R, 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 R. Make the seal noise, baby. Drop some seal emoji. Um, Fuck, the camera died again. All right, fuck it. Anyway, man, look. My plans right now are to get the fuck out of Philly. Um, I'm really grateful as hell to be here. Staying with family, though. Being around my pop, my aunt, my uncle. Um... I don't, I have complete faith and confidence in the fact that a lot of things are going to take off in a beautiful, brilliant way once I get the hell out west, and uh, I don't know when the next time I'm going to be able to do stuff like this is, so I'm enjoying it while I got it, you know, I'm in no rush, but uh, I am itching to hit the fucking road, you know, see what the fuck's out there in store for, for, for the boy. Um, new music coming very soon. The new album, Rascal, has been doing great. Um, I'm looking to book one last show in Philly, sort of like a Bon Voyage type deal. And uh, if you're in the Philly area, I hope you end up showing up to it, man. It's going to be a fucking good time. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, my gosh. Um, yeah, I'm going to do a live show and a Q&A, just me and Ruffin, because Ruffin was like the motherfucker that held me down the most when it, when it comes to this music shit and this life, you know, friend shit. Uh, but after that, I'm going to hit the fucking road. Hopefully I could do some shows on the road. That'd be pretty bitching, right? Yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, but anyway, uh, whatever time it is, wherever the hell you're at, I hope you're fucking enjoying it, and I hope you're safe. And um, if you're not, remember that you got the power to change it. Um, and also, for anybody out there that might be embarrassed of their living or sleeping situation, just know your boy Kane is doing better than he ever has on every fucking front. And he's still sleeping on a fucking floor. And, you know, 27 years old with his family ain't, ain't out here fucking and running amok like he probably could be. So, uh, it's cool, man. You don't got to be in a rush to do all those things. All those things are out there. Um, yeah. In due time, you know. Stay focused. And stay alive. What's poppin'? This is the Kane Show.